Okay, so we are all very happy that you're here and hopefully this will be interactive and we'll all learn. I like to, uh, talking to my mother who came here in 1947, I like to remind people that we didn't start coming here and in fact I'm sure Kwaku will go back further back in history to tell us the presence here has been much longer than they like us to remember. I was just reading an article that Wula Sewa and Kwaku wrote and it was reminding us about the African presence here. During abolition you had people called the Sons of Africa who were abolitionists and amongst them was even Ignacio Sancho who was a voter. He's on the voters register in Westminster twice. You know that there was a class, pro or there still is, I should say, a class issue in this country. Only people with property could vote. So look at it that in, I've forgotten the years, it, uh, 1740 or 18, 1870 or so, he was voting. And it's because he had a bookshop. And that is sort of the history that sometimes we need to remember that the Windrush is not the Mayflower. We didn't just arrive in 1948. There were lots of people who arrived in, on different boats, different ships, and people have been here since, you know. So like I said, Mommy tells us that she came in 1947 to study nursing. She was one of four, and her dad said, okay, if you do nursing, then I can educate your brothers as well. So she came here, it, she wasn't on a scholarship. So she came, and, she, and interestingly enough, she was in Northwest London. She said at that time, Kingsbury was a hospital, you know, so now you find that it's some NHS thing there, but half of the land has been sold for housing. And then she trained in what is now Central Middlesex Hospital. So that was her hospital. So that's how far, so we're talking 1947 to 19, she left the UK 1950s, went back to Ghana, and then came back to go to Liverpool. You know, Liverpool has a school of tropical medicine. Mm -hmm. And she, and her experience, I remember somebody, uh, a colleague in Brent, a counselor in Brent, was interviewing her just to have this first-hand account of what people do. And what she, she was explaining, he asked her about the colour bar. She said, yes, the colour bar was a very powerful thing. But one of the things we asked, he asked in particular about housing. And she said looking for housing was difficult. She couldn't find a place to stay. But because she was a midwife, in the end, it was an Irish woman whose baby she had delivered who gave her a place to stay. Mm -hmm. So it's just that, you know, human contact always makes that difference. Mm -hmm. And so without further ado, I'll hand over to Brother Kwaku so that he can formally welcome Ansel and we can start. Kwaku? Yeah, okay. Right, thank you. Okay, welcome, welcome. Some new faces. We're gonna kick off uh, because there's a guy called Anthony, and we did something. I'm not sure whether it's the African and Proud program I do at uh, United Holborn, but he came to read his book, and as with these things, there's never enough time. But I promised him that when we're in Harrow, I will invite him. Sadly, I got an email from him telling me he was outside the country and he couldn't get to the UK. But it's wide, Barbara. Can you come along straight? Because can you come along? Have I got the wrong name? Sharon! Sandra! 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 Sandra, 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 Sandra please come, come, come across. Uh, okay, so his wife, uh, Sandra, is just going to tell us a little bit about the book. And it's on sales. They've got a few copies in them. We've got some resources, some books, some DVDs. So do uh, have a look if you're interested in buying some resources. And then that stand, there's just a few things you can take away if you're interested in. Nana mentioned an article we've, we've written here. Yeah, the article is in this month issue of New African. It looks like Time magazines, that type of magazine, international magazine, and I've copied an A3 copy there so you can, you can scan there. I've also got some resources and uh, these are precious because it's just like a, a few of them. That shows what we're going to talk about, African Jubilee Year and the African Jubilee Declaration over there. <coughs> Unfortunately, I can't get Wi-Fi in here, although it says I'm linked and I'm, I'm, I'm connected. I'm not getting the Wi-Fi, so I will give you a link to uh, a video we did here five years ago, called 25 Years On, which was looking at the 25th anniversary of the introduction of Black History Month in the, in, the, in, the, in the UK. And the guy that came up with the idea, 
a single video. So if I give the link, you can you can Google it and on YouTube and, and check it out. <coughs> so not to worry. I'm mindful of time. Now. I want us to get through our presentations and have a dialogue because people. I'm glad that people have come not just to sit down, but people want to learn. And some of the learning is not just in the presentations, but your questions also teases out where you want us to go. So. Um, well, my name is Kwaku Says. There, I put these programs together. I've been doing that, I think, for the last five years in Harrow. Though we've done programs going back longer than that in, in, in Harrow. And so, without further ado, Sandra, that's the book, The Man Who Came to London. So, this is someone post, 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 post Windrush. You know something? I'm beginning to believe that the Windrush, the technology, is becoming meaningless. Anyone. The, the wind rush, wind rush. You know the lady that was on, um, um, uh, yeah. The said wind rush. Yeah. So when I mean, you know, it's come, it, it, it's mm. just losing its meaning because they're just tacking onto everything. Mm. But this guy was making a point that I think he was a teacher and he came very, very late, well after wind rush, so in, 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 in the eighties. So he's giving his uh, perspective of life in London. But I would rather Sandra because she's more intimate with, uh, in terms of the author and also the book. So Sandra. Good evening everyone. Um, let me just try and give you a small presentation about um, this book, um, The Man Who Came to London, and it's written by my husband Anthony Cookson. Um, it just actually, actually came out last December. You can get it to purchase on Amazon, whether in the hard copy or um, by a Kindle. So um, basically, it's like Paco said, he came here in um, 2000. He was actually recruited to come here to teach as an English teacher in East London. Um, so this book basically gives um, his experience of what life is like in the UK in comparison to when like, my grandmother and my grandfather came here. Um, it's got 30 chapters, not a lot to read, um, but all the chapters I must say that they're, well to me and others who have read it, um, very informative. It gives you like, um, it's life growing up in Jamaica, um, what schools are like in Jamaica in comparison to schools here. Um, <coughs> Um, different places in the UK that he's been to, um, some experiences of other teachers and how they were seen when they came here to teach in the UK. Um, a typical example is one of his um, co-workers who came to teach English and geography like Anthony and um, one of her students went to her and asked her which subject she teaches and she told her English and she said English and she said yes and she asked her which country are you from and she said Jamaica and she said how can a teacher from Jamaica come to England to teach English when it's actually England and so it's um, it just goes to show you um, how because this is England and we are from different countries, Jamaica, Africa, India, wherever. They think that, or some people may think that we can't, we don't speak English, and um, we can't come here to speak, to teach English. Also, his um, experience as well was when he was coming through um, immigration. Um, they had dogs, sniffer dogs, smelling his luggages. And um, quite a few people got pulled over because, of course, they thought they were coming over with ganja. Um, one of his students asked him, Sir, do you smoke? He said, No. He said, Why do you ask him that question? He said, Well, people on my street from Jamaica, they all smoke ganja. And that's just how people tend to <coughs> stereotype people because of where they're from, the color of their skin, <coughs> etc. Um, so, um, like Papa said, it's my husband's book, so I'm just basically giving you um, like little ideas of what's in this book. Like I said, it's got 30 chapters. Um, you've got um, some chap a chapter about the grammar thing, which is with um, the case with Miss Johnson. 
um, teaching English in school and based on the fact that she's from Jamaica she should be teaching English in England. Um, you've got another chapter on the new investment of we know we've got our families back home and of course we have to send um, remittance for them and they sometimes they don't seem to understand the pressure that we are under here with our bills and stuff like that because but because it's always been thought that the grass is greener here they expect us to send money for them in Jamaica so that gives you a bit as well um, for us his favorite um, game is cricket so a bit of cricket is in it and um, another chapter about what well, I said the windrush of course when this book was written and printed um, we knew nothing about the windrush at the time um, unfortunately one of his grand uncle was caught up in it he spent 60 years here without having his papers he kept on delaying going to Jamaica until he decided to go on his arrival in Jamaica he only spent three days alive he died mm. yes so it was mm. after everything started coming up then we realized mm. that he was actually caught mm. up in the wind rush so I would advise you guys to have a copy I've got um, I think I've got five four or five copies with me um, they're actually on sale on Amazon for ten pounds I can give you a copy for eight pounds tonight and also you can get it in the Kindle form or I can tell you where to buy it, like I said, on Amazon. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much, Sandra, Sharon, anything. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, thank you very much. And since her husband came to England, he's gone to the Middle East teaching. So yeah, he was hoping to be here because it was supposed to be the midterm break, but there were all the politics and whatever, so he couldn't come. Anyway, thank you, thank you very much. Okay, yeah, a map of time because as I said, we do these very short programs, two hours. Well, it's have been up 90 minutes and more since there's networking and refreshments. So we're launching African history season in Harrow. Can I say what happened was that um Initially, we used to go at Black History Month, and maybe it's good that our answer is here to get the background. And after a while, we as an organization, BTWSC, uh, we're doing the programs, and whether they're funded or not, we call them our uh, African History Season. And then, on 2012, that to mark the 25th anniversary of both the introduction of Black History Month in the UK, and also the 25th anniversary or the first, they tend to say first four black MPs. That is language. So as we go along, sometimes I will explain language. Politically, when they talk about black, they don't mean just of African heritage. So uh, <coughs> Asians, and there are a couple of Asians in the room, will be under that. So politically, when they talk about black, they're talking about uh, Asians and, uh, and, and Africans. So probably that is right to say that the first four black MPs were elected in 1987, so that's why we're at the 25th. But what we focused on, and I love Kivas, and I've done the program with him, was that Kivas was not the first Asian MP in the UK. There had been three pre previous to him, going as far back as the 19th century, not even the 20th century, the 19th century. Right, so the focus was that it was indeed three Africans, they were the first African MPs in the UK. So uh, we marked that, and there was a guy called Mark Wasworth who was on the panel. And then to mark the 25th anniversary of the introduction of uh, African History Month, or Black History Month, as it was called then, we had our answer Wong on the panel. And through video, we had uh, a guy called Adai Sebo. And I'm going to give you the link because we, we can't play it. Uh, we can't stream it, and you can see what he says about how come we ended up having uh, Black, Black History Month. Okay. So, a lot of people know about Black History Month. Today, Black History Month is very much uh, embedded in the, in the cultural calendar. People from the Prime Minister down to the humble library and uh, 
community centers have Black History Month. Indeed, I'm sure our youngsters in here will tell them that they have something called Black History Month in their school. Don't disappoint me. Do you have Black History Month in your school? Yeah. Did you have one this year? Yeah. What did she wasn't do too sure. sure. She what wasn't too sure. What did you do for Black History Month? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we had like uh, our, our lunch was like based on the Caribbean. Oh. That was Black History Month in their school. Yes! You see, you see, culture is important, but history is wider than culture. And it's very easy for us to devote, oh, bring some plantain, bring something to the school and we share. We can do that for the 11 months of the year. Or wear some clothes. So being Ghanaian, I'll probably bring this to Kente. Oh, look at Kwaku. This is what they wear in Ghana. But they don't go to the serious things. How come we are here for a start? And those things that happened, or who is head of a, girl, a, a guy called Paul Stevenson, yes, you, and I'm, I'm sure you're not going to disappoint because I'm sure you guys have heard of uh, Rosa Parks. Yeah. yeah, but if I say Paul Stevenson, it, it's yeah. over our heads. Yeah. But why shouldn't you know about someone like Paul Stevenson that did something similar in the UK? So as much as I'm a pan Afghanist, I'm interested in African history, I try and focus to African British because it has to have some relevance to us. For the guys in Brent, we went into a Brent school to do so-called Black History Month. And yes, they had displays of paint or uh, photographs. Fantastic! But you know the problem, and I pointed it out to them. They're all American. <laughs> and this is in Brent. And I told them that they didn't realize that. The first African to be in the cabinet was Paul Boatin, he came from Brent. Oh, yeah. The first woman to yeah. be all, 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 also uh, in. Mm. No, 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 mayor. I say, uh, so I think of Don Butler. Don Butler has also become a minister at that time yeah. from Brent. Mm -hmm. And you don't have any relevance to put those photographs. It's a default to that American thing. So I mm -hmm. don't have my American brothers and sisters. It's important. That gets uh, taught in school as part of the, the, the history curriculum. Mm -hmm. But they also have, uh, what should I say, leeway to teach other things like our history. They're, they're too lazy or it's not easily available, so they don't make the effort, you know? So that's why I focus on uh, African British history as much as I can because we've got a lot. And we go back, uh, Nana was telling me how far I'll go. Probably I'm not going to go that far today. But it's important for us to know that I don't know to get a phone name. It's not from my wife, so I don't know who calls me. <laughs> Look, my friend, you should know that I'm doing a program. So yeah, I, we play to the people in, 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 in the room. Yes, so as I'm saying, everyone from our youngsters up to adults have heard of Black History Month. We've got one European here. Even Europeans are not particularly interested in African history with Africa. We would know that sometime in the year, even if they don't know it's October, there's a focus on something called Black History Month. But what we do not know is the backstory to that, that, how that happened. It didn't just happen. And something I want to leave with, and I'm, I'm not going to dwell too much on it. I'll do it enough for you to have a sense of it because I've got uh, a project focused so much on that. Uh, a month today, November 26th, at uh, City Hall. And it's called Commemorating African Jubilee Year 1987 to 88 at 30. Yeah, so we'll do the same, but uh, uh, it'll be a much more focus on the African Jubilee Year. So what I want to leave you with today, and I've been saying lots of things, so maybe not everything that you're going to remember. I understand that when I'm sitting here, I listen to things. I'm not going to remember everything, so that's uh, understood. But the only thing I'd like you to leave with, and plus, especially those from South London, <laughs> is, and you, yeah, I appreciate you making the effort to cross the river to come here, is that there was something called African Jubilee Year. And part of that, there was something called the African Jubilee Declaration. And without that, we would not have Black History Month. Yeah? Yes? Yes. Okay, now that I've given you that, I'll, I'll just sort of run through things quickly. Okay. This is the logo of African Jubilee Year. What do you see? What to you is a focal point there? And people can see things differently. I'll pick on this man because I know him. <laughs> quickly, Marcus quickly. Garvey. Okay, so you put the Marcus Garvey. Anybody else picked on something that was focal to them? Because you all don't have to have the, the yes, you all don't have to have the same view. Africa. Fantastic. Okay, so let's just pick on those two things. 
You see, because people do not know the history of how Black History Month came, that is why um, you have everything put into <coughs> it. And I'll tell you this, the only, I don't live in Harrow, the only reason we started coming to Harrow and doing things in Harrow was that Nana was a counsellor and I was doing something in central London. Also, I wear the hat of, uh, okay, I call myself a history consultant and music industry consultant, right? So I do things around music. So we've got something called the Black Music Congress. Then we had a congress in central London, and that's where Nana came to. So nothing to do with history. And said, so, oh, in Harrow, now they're trying to change Black History Month into, <coughs> Nana, before you go tell us, into what were they changing into? Something cultures. It was, uh, I think it was history of uh, culture. Or, something. Or something. So it was diversity. like multicultural, something like that. Mm -hmm. So we came in here. Yes. They say, I'm training as a teacher assistant, and they want to take over the black history to change for something else. Absolutely. I, I, I'll tell you, in fact, it's very yeah, current I'm because sure. we're talking about what 10 years ago. The idea was, okay, look at the demographics. Fair enough, um, the demographics here, they have Europeans and then so-called ethnic minorities. The Asians are the majority, there are Africans and, and other ethnicities in, in here. So maybe people have an issue of the black because the black, they were not seen as a political black, which is non-Europeans, but they're seen as Africans. So they had an issue with, 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 with that. So we came in here. And I'll tell you, we had the meetings in the council chamber, which just across, the, across, across this room. and. We came to a series of meetings, let me just tell you this, because I'm not denigrated, but I'm just giving a backstory to how we ended up, I ended up in being here. Everybody on the panel was, uh, uh, was, uh, was Asian. It was, and we're talking about black man. It was so embarrassing that they called one African Caribbean man to come and join them. Right. <laughs> then we had a journey. We said, look, African history is about, oh, black history is about the African experience. <coughs> look, I don't know what month it is, but we have Diwali, and the council supports it. There's space for a whole, the, 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 the Jews have their things as well, and the council right. supports it. Mm -hmm. So we need to know that the October is supposed to be for the African, but you know, there's a compromise. One year, we moved, and I say, you know something, okay, 80% African, 20% Asian. I'm mindful of the demographics of the place. Mm -hmm. But we started moving to say, look, it has to be about the African experience. One or two, somebody, you said you came to anti-racist alliance. There was an Asian guy that was very much involved, Baldev, and also in our management committee for quite, quite a while. So all those majority Africans, there were one or two people who understood the political black and he stayed with us, but he did not introduce Asian uh, history. He understood that it had to be Af African history. Okay. So in 2012, when we marked the 20th anniversary of African sorry, Black History Month, we, we decided in that room that from now on, we're going to call it African History Season. And technically, we're the only borough in London that officially uses African History Season or African History Month. Everyone uses Black History Month, except two. Two, 2007, yeah, 2007, borough, Hilling Dean, decided to change and call it our, uh, that, no, call, call something to do with culture, so, culture, culture month, something like that, or multicultural month. And then in Wandsworth, where I, I used to do some uh, Black History Month programs, I saw the transition. One year I was doing Black History Month, and then the following years they changed it to uh, Diversity Month. And yes, some boroughs are pushing to drop the African, but I think this is why we need to have it, not even Black History Month, but African History Month. You focus on that. And that is right in the middle for a reason. And then my man talked about Marcus Garvey. How big that is in there. You see the, the statue? Because what we don't realize is that the introduction of Black History Month is very much predicated on Marcus Garvey. If Marcus Garvey was not around, yeah, people would always do African history, but the formalized Black History Month would not have happened. So I'll tell you a bit, and I'm hoping that I'm not taking an uh, uh, answer standard. So, this over there is the official logo for Black History Month. Again, what is in the center, I know it's a bit small, but what is in the center there? Because I don't think they put this thing to, to, with, with, together without any, any, any thought. There was a lot of thought to all the symbols in there. Can somebody tell us in the middle of that logo, the black one there? Sankofa. Sankofa is an African, or sorry, Ghanaian, and I think more 
Akan. Uh, Akan. Um, uh, symbol. Uh, 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 yeah. That says. There's, well, it's translated in, in so many words. The one I like is, there's no shame in going back to pick up in order to empower you to move forward. Sarkofa, right. Very African. So even though it says Black History Month in there, there's no doubt that it was a very African-centered situation. And can I tell you when they said African, he thought of the global African. So many people of African heritage, not just from the continent or the Caribbean, South, uh, you know, you know, Australasia, there are Africans there. India, there are Africans there. They were all part of that global African. That is what <coughs> Guy Sable had in mind when he was talking about African. And indeed, they did have some um, well wishing. What, what was it? Message or support from I think uh, Australia, maybe if. Um, what's his name? Answer remembers it, 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 it can elaborate on that and I think they had something from the, 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 the Dalits in in, um, India. In, 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 in India. I'm, I want you to understand this symbol because my wife was on the internet today trying to Google African Jubilee year and there's hardly anything. They mention it, but it doesn't say much about it so you don't learn about African Jubilee year on, on the internet. That red band is talking about uh, 150 years since the so-called emancipation of enslaved Africans in the Caribbean, or British Caribbean. Yeah? That's 1838, and not 1834, because a lot of people look at 1834. So again, maybe I didn't expect to do this kind of history, but I'm just going to give you. When the Abolition Act, yes, uh, was passed in 1834, the, the, the Act was 33, but it came into effect in 1834, 1st August, you imagine that it's supposed to abolish enslavement. Yeah? 1st August 1834, you're supposed to be free. An act that is supposed to free us, only free people under six years old. Under. Did you hear that? Under six years old. Under six years old. <laughs> so what do you think happened to the other people? <laughs> right. Because not only are the enslavers given the equivalent of 20 million pounds as compensation, <laughs> But they were also allowed to hold on to the enslaved Africans for four to six years. Sure. What kind of emancipation is that? <laughs> you couldn't get out of the plantation if you wanted to. And little Johnny, or no, I'm not going to use a name like little Kweku <laughs> or Kwame, who is under six, what? Is he going to walk out of the plantation because he's free? He's tied to the system. So the following day, when the Times printed, all over the British Empire, the sun does not set on any enslaved African. It was a lie. It wasn't. So these people are correct to, to locate the so-called emancipation, not in 1834, but 1838. Because what happened was that 1838, the first law was supposed to be so-called emancipated. That really meant the, you know, there's this thing about, to give, to give you a, a, a short time, there's this thing about, house uh, enslaved and, and the field, mm -hmm. which are the people in the house, because they've been closer to master, so they can leave four years. And the people in the field had six years. But come it, so the six years would have meant 1840, but they kicked the fast in the Caribbean that decided, okay, 1838, everyone is so-called emancipated. So this was marking uh, the 100th anniversary of that. This was also marking the 25th anniversary of the OAU Organization for African Unity, of African Unity. And the last one was marking the centennial, the hundredth year. Young youngsters, I know you're tired, right? But have you heard of someone called Marcus Garvey? Yeah. Yeah, you came to the program last year, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> so Marcus Garvey was born hundred years ago in, or it was, yes, his birth was hundred years ago in 1987. So this symbol is it same? Is it focused on anyone's history apart from Africans? Now, I'm asking a question. 
So that is why you can't bring anything else. We should celebrate all cultures, but should have their window in their space. So that is Kwa Kwakutan. That's Kwakutan. So all uh, these are symbols of Marcus Garvey and us that family said they came into what we do in Wilson. Now, the African Jubilee year was supposed to run August 87 <coughs> to July uh, 88. <coughs> but since the organization, I'll leave that to our uh, answer, or else I'll take everything else to say. Since the organization that uh, put this together was going to be dissolved in 88, one of the things that they said was that all these councils that have signed up to this African Jubilee thing should also, henceforth, going forward, mark African, sorry, Black History Month in October. So I'm saying that Black History Month is a legacy of the African Jubilee Declaration. And that's something we haven't heard about. We've not heard about the African Jubilee year, nor have we heard about the Declaration. So that's why I'm spending this year trying to sensitize people to the backstory of how Black History Month came. It didn't come just in a vacuum. It wasn't just about Black History Month. And now, again, I'll, I'll, I'll rush through a few things. Um, I said about Marcus. The story is that, I'll say it quickly, only because it's on the video, you can go and watch it. Adai Sebo's colleague called Adai Sebo, <laughs> I said Adai Sebo, wrong colleague. Adai Sebo was in the office and he saw a colleague, a female colleague, and she didn't look very good. So he went over to her and said, oh, what's wrong with you? And she said, oh, yesterday my son, Marcus, Ask me, mommy, before I went to bed, mommy, why can't I be white? <laughs> but it's not surprising. And I, um, have you seen that video where you have the youngsters, both Africans and Europeans, and they say, what's the bad dog? What's the good dog? Mm -hmm. And stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They've done so many years, oh, for, I think from the 50s, and uh, someone did about 10 years ago, you get the same result. <laughs> so obviously, uh, what Adassi was saying, that there's something working here for this guy, remember, he wasn't called Joshua or Lamont or he was called Marcus for a purpose. The mother was aware. So they named after Marcus Garvey. So some you'd imagine their household is going to be of a Pan-Africanist uh, uh, ethos, but still it was not enough. So the outside influences was impacting on young Marcus. Then she asked mom, why oh, can't I be white? Because all the things he said about Africans is so negative. Mm -hmm. So as I said, to cut the long story, decided to do some things to uh, mitigate that situation. They went into schools and wanted young people to see the contribution of, of Africans to British society, to the world civilization. Again, uh, the organization was which was the GLC, Greater London uh, Council, and they were going to be ab abolished in 86. So they quickly put a, a program together. One was called the Historical, uh, historical Lectures. That's uh, a t-shirt from that. And they got, again, I think at that time, maybe we didn't have any famous Africans, so they had all these uh, uh, African-American lecturers come and, and, and tell us about African history. They also had an exhibition at the South Bank, yeah? Uh, it, it was looking at the African, so it was called London, Africans' contributions to London, because the GLC could only talk about London. So it was, uh, so I've got a book here. That's the book that came from the ex exhibition. So let's just read it correctly. A history of the black presence in London. So this was an exhibition that ran at the end of March. Sadly, uh, the GLC uh, was abolished on uh, 31st March. Yeah. So what happened was that there was a successful organization called LSPU, London Strategic Policy Unit. So Adai Sebo and Wong also moved there. And one of the things they did was and I need to tell you this, right? Why I tell Marcus Garvey is, 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 is uh, cardinal. When they started, they were trying to do something to look at the centenary of Marcus Garvey, 1987. Along the line, because all the documents are at the London um, Metropolitan Archives, London Metropolitan Archives. So you can see the progression. It started off called the Marcus Garvey Centenary. So let's do a program about Marcus Garvey and, and African history. And then as it developed into something called African Jubilee Year. Yeah? And as I said, I took the backstory and the, uh, the, the declaration was in there. Let me give you a, a close-up of the declaration because uh, I, I can't read it all. But the important thing that I take from the, there, there are about five things in here. Uh, maybe I should read a, a bit. 
The first one says to uphold the tenets of GLC's anti-racist and anti-apartheid uh, declarations. Because the GLC had some uh, anti-racist and apartheid de declarations. So it's saying, if you sign up to this, this is what you have to do. You have to be anti-racist and uh, uh, have an anti-apartheid. So you don't buy made in South Africa goods and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, one of the things they also said was that councils should try and promote the African experience through different ways, like naming parks, Buildings, streets after Africans are notable Africans. Yeah, and notice today we've got about two Marcos Garvey's. No, no, Mandela. I think Mandela is the only one that's got two streets named after him in London, uh, on both north and south of, of, of London. But what I was surprised about recently was I discovered there's a Steve Biko Street or road in East Linton, and I think only East Linton, remember, it was the hard, it was one of the hard left. Uh, Barrows. So only Islington or Brent could have had the Steve Biko Street. Because you know people love Mandela, but uh, Steve Biko is a bit too hard for mainstream. So <laughs> no, no. So we would have taken a left uh, barrel to, to, to have a, a street named after Steve Biko. Um, so I think I pretty much saw, said what I want. I want to say. So that's it. Yeah, that's in, in there. Uh, that is what a diaspora looks like. It's got the decoration, and I've got a copy of, of, of there. So if you want to read it, you can take your time and have a look there. Okay. So I'm just going to plug what we, we do in this organization. I said a month from here, from today, we've got commemorating African Jubilee year, 1987 to 88 at 30, and that's at the Civic Center. So no, Civic Center. City Hall. There's someone paying attention to City Hall, which is where Sadikan is. Yeah. So you're welcome to it. All our things are on eventbrite.com, so you can go in there and book. Uh, oh, we've got an interesting thing. Uh, so this next week, Saturday, called Hostile Environment, Look to Africa. And I don't know if I can have a prize. Let me see if I can have, I'm going to give a prize. Please, if you know the answer, do not shout it out, because just raise your answer, I know who, who, who. Now, this is called hostile environment. We know where that came from. In fact, it doesn't come from the tourists. It started with labor. I'm labor, but let's be honest, it started with labor. Right. But obviously, the, the tourists took it to another level. Yes. Uh, you labor. Or independent. Uh, you got rest, it must be labor. <laughs> right. But now, so this is the question. Is a look to Africa. Which pan africanist personality would that be more aligned to? Raise your hand if you think you know the answer. I'm just going to give her a minute and I'll move on. God, I just thought I'll throw that out. Somebody knows. I'll give them a prize. And so I smiled. You, you can either be right or wrong. So if you think you want to have a go, just say it. But raise your hand so I know who's, who's going to answer. So which pan africanist icon or African do we know that look to Africa is most aligned with? Uh, no, don't say the hand. They had to go out. Yes, go ahead. Well, I'm only going by the picture. Kwame Nkrumah. Good try. You know, sometimes I say you can either be right or wrong. Yeah. So, but the important thing to me is that you made an effort. Yeah, yeah. And there's logic to your, your thing. It could well have been, but no. And you got good eyesight to recognize Kwame Nkrumah from that, that distance. <laughs> yes. So, I'm going to give one more. This lady, after this lady. I hope she doesn't get a prize. Marcus I won't keep it. <laughs> Go ahead. Marcus Garvey. It's Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey. Uh, there, there's a book called uh, The Philosophy's Opinion of Marcus Garvey. But what people, uh, the lady, the way you know it, you must really know it. The, but what people do not understand the subheading. Africa for Africans at home and abroad. That's part of it. But we, we see the philosophy and op opinions, and we don't see that bit. Yeah, maybe I'll give you a DVD later, so come and remind. That's your prize. <laughs> yeah, F fantastic. So that is looking at, oh, wow, well, yeah, why well, not? <laughs> so we're looking at the hostile environment situation from political history. So I will give you a, a bit of history. And there is where I'll talk about the history of the immigration on, on, on all those laws. It did not start today. It did not start around 1948 when the wind rush came or the 1948 nationality bill. There's, there's been notes before then. Yeah? And we look at how we can move forward. And the idea is that, yeah, if you want to live in Britain, that's fine. But you've got British structures to uphold you here. 
or if you want to go to Africa or the Caribbean. So if it, though it says Africa, we're talking about where Africans are. So it could well be the Caribbean you want to go to, you've got to explore or how, how, how you can relocate. Then obviously you've seen today's program about the what I want. Oh, I thought Nana thing was here. Is Nana thing here? No. Okay, Nana is doing Pan-Africanism. Oh, you guys should come. It's a small place, so you have to book if you want to come. But it's, it's more intimate. It's called Pan-Africanism pan -Africanism made simple. So Nana here making a presentation. I've seen it once and it was great. I've seen it. It's short, but you learn a lot, to be honest, in, in, in that, yeah? So that's... Monday, 5th November, it's not this room, except we've got so many people booking, it's our Harold Menkap. Okay, so that's that one. That's, we do extra history and reasoning sessions. So let me tell you something. Nana said we do a whole lot of things. That was true. I used to, I'm getting a bit tired now. <laughs> so my, no, because we're not paying, and that's our point. Uh, Sarah, thank you very much. Uh, what I've noticed is that, yeah, it's fine to do, I, lo I love it, but it takes a lot of, out, out of one. So, where is Sharon? Sharon, last year, I, I threw it out and I said, if our people want to do it, they're welcome. So Sharon, I think last year you did something on rock, other people did other things. So, we've got the space, as Nana said, so if you want to do something, just email us to say, this is a topic and this is what I want to do. So it doesn't have to be on my shoulders. Then we can have a proper season. So the only program that's locked down is Nana's on, on 5th no November. Yeah, so if you want to see some more, why? Didn't someone say, if you want to see the chain, be the, 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 the what they say, you the chain that you want to see. So if you want to see programs, why don't you do it? As I said, I don't call myself an historian, so we can all learn a little bit. It doesn't have to be major, because it's not a classroom or situation or academic or thing. So you can come and talk about one little bit of, 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 of the history, yeah? So I think that's pretty much me, you know? Yeah, so you've learned a bit of this guy. Oh. So one, one question, because I like to give a prize. Sometimes I ask some questions that should be easy. Okay, can somebody tell me what they've learned looking at this symbol from today? If you, you're gonna make an offer, just raise your hand and... Can some of us, answer is gonna come. To somebody raises their hand and answers this, no, answer is not gonna come. I know you didn't come for me, it came from Ansel. So, my friend, go for it! It's the African Jubilee, which is on the 100th birthday of Margaret Scarborough. Right. Okay. And it lasts for one year. It lasts for one year, that's, that's what yes. I see when I see that symbol. Okay, did you know about this before today? I didn't. You know. Okay. So, can you give a round of applause to him? So again, I'll make sure you get, you get a prize before you go and remind me, yeah? yeah? So thank you very much. So it's been worthwhile coming from all the way from South London. Mm -hmm. So now, actually, without further ado, uh, I'll give you Ansel, and maybe the only thing I'm going to say, if you book today, you've seen the little blurb, Ansel worked for the GLC. Ansel worked for the London Strategic Policy Unit. So what better, and also, uh, the reason why we, we, we are lucky to have him is that he was the line manager for the guy, oh, okay, another prize coming, another prize coming, but I'm, I'm very, I want you to, I want you to, uh, what can I say? I'm going to say that no one's going to get it, but I want you to prove me wrong. <laughs> so, uh, because it may be a new name to you, or you may have just said it today. If you know the name of the guy that had the idea for Black History Month, and I mentioned him at least twice this evening, raise your hand and I would like to give you a prize. I know it's an unusual name, fair enough. But if you book, you may have seen his name on, 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 on well, the man, plate. Just remember the surname. <laughs> no, no, the surname is fine. The surname is fine. Yeah. So are you going to go have a go? I'll have a go. I'm sure it's a, a Mr. Wong. No, Mr. Wong is the one sitting in front of you. <laughs> yes. Okay. And I was going to talk about Mr. Wong, but to introduce him to come over. But then I talked about, I, I, I had to make the connection about his relationship to the guy who had the That's idea. Me. So I wanted. Okay. Uh, someone remember the name, but as I said, you probably wouldn't get it because it's an unusual name. And if you, but if you booked, you should have seen. Anybody want to has a, a guess? Going, lady in red, go for it. <laughs> go for it. No, Yeah, no, no. What did you say? You know something? Because you made, because you made the effort and you're half right. Usually, my wife would tell you tell you I'm a hard teacher because I I used to teach. No. So if it's not, it's not 100%, I don't give you. 
right? But I feel this environment, you've made an effort, then I'm going to give it to you. Yeah, the name is Adai Sebo, but you got half of it, so I'm still giving it to you. Guys, you know something, since I'm doing this spontaneously, you have to remind me to give you a prize, right? So I think you've got one. Sharon, did you get? No, who else? There was one. You, so, it's, yeah, please you have to remind me because this is spontaneous, it's not planned. So we've got three guys going to get a prize. So, yeah, okay, so that's to introduce Adai, uh, sorry, Mr. Wong. Mr. Wong was the land manager for this guy called Adai Sebo, right? So Adai Sebo comes with an idea. If it's land manager, you, for those that work in big institutions, if you're a land manager, because they are the gatekeepers, if it's not done with what you're saying, it ain't gonna happen. Mm -hmm. So Adai Sebo's thing is facilitate, sorry, Mr. Wong's thing is facilitating the idea that Adai Sebo had because he has to work through the system internally, and also they had to work with counselors. The GLC, just like the GLA, is, is a, a, a body, uh, they do the administration, but the, the, the body is, is the councillors. Like we've got the Greater London Authority, right? So uh, <coughs> we, we vote them in, uh, 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 they call assembly members, I think that's what, what, they, what they call. Yeah, so uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, and so one has to make sure that it's in a language, and it's a perspective that the politicians can find, can cope with. You see what I'm saying? Right. There's a council, and my man here is a councillor. You may have a good idea, but if you're not speaking their language, and you're not making it, they're not seeing the value, it could be a great idea for Harry, but it ain't gonna happen. Yeah. So that's, uh, so without further ado, that is where uh, Mr. Wong comes in. And the idea started from the GLC, but it, it came to uh, fruition in the, okay, another prize coming. <laughs> uh, so which organization was the one that actually brought the idea to fruition? So all these things we're talking to, although the, you can say the roots were the GLC, the, the final organization, the two organizations, what was the organization that brought this thing into fruition? I mentioned it a couple of times. Yes, no? Go for it! The Pan-African. No, I'm looking at a, 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 a London-wide, <coughs> a, a, a London organization, like a GLC, when the GLC ended. Okay, the London Strategic <coughs> Policy Unit. So that organization, at Diasebo and uh, and so one moved over there and they're able to still channel this thing through that system and through, again, the councillors, because it was funded by the, a, a, a couple of, not a couple, about, it depends, eight, nine, thirteen, I've seen thirteen different numbers of, of London councils. They pulled together to make sure that the ideas of the GLC moved forward, yeah? So, without further ado, Mr. Ansel Wong. Because I think time is obviously going and I, I'd much prefer us to engage with each other in a kind of, uh, discussion um, and a, a, a opportunity to explore things together. Um, but you see, one of the problems we have this, in this history of, Black, uh, history of Black History Month is that there are a number of people who all claim to be the originators who really to start it. And it's a process by which things happen which we need to be able to be aware of. Nobody started it. Nobody just got to the idea and did it. It was a process of development. Because you've got to remember, we celebrated Black History Month in February, every year. The organization I had belonged to, Pan-African Movement, the organization I belonged to, the Black Liberation Front, celebrated in London Black History Month every February because that is what was happening in America. It was Black History Month in America. So we have a history, we have an, a, a, a continuity of engagement and, and involvement. And then you find a lot of other people saying they were the ones responsible. Up to yesterday, I saw an article in a paper claiming that Roy Saul, who operated the University of Black Studies, started Black History Month as a result of that. And yesterday, Mark Wadsworth implied that the Labour Party started it Black because sections. October, the Black Section started because October was the time when they had their. Um, the, tail, the tail end of the conference. The conference, yes. Yeah, the tail end. The, yes. So I can't say yay or no, and I don't know where all of these come from. Although I can tell you what happened with me mm. and what happened with us. Yeah? So you may take my word for it, or you may take Kwaku's word for it, 
or you may question it and do your research. But on the basis of engagement, and it is true that in those days, uh, and I, I am I'm a retired um, individual, I'm in my 73rd year, so I have a long history of involvement in black history and black struggle. And in those parts of that struggle was to begin to be, uh, identify the important things that make us survive. Mm -hmm. And yes, it is true that we mimicked and we follow fashion everything that happened in America. Mm -hmm. And we always forgot whatever <coughs> happened in terms of the United Kingdom. And that is a struggle I had as a person, that's a struggle as a, as a, as a community activist. Because the, the organizations we belong to were fighting for a lot of these. The Black Liberation Front was a, a black revolutionary organization based in North London. And we used to have a newspaper called Grassroots. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Mm -hmm. I was the editor of Grassroots newspaper. And as you know, we had real problems because the police took us under a lot of control and arrested us and all sorts of things happened. So what happened is that there was an ongoing acknowledgement, an <coughs> ongoing recognition that as black people, we need to begin to identify where we are going. And that historic definition of black over the period of years since I came um, has changed as well. And the words, as Kwaku has already mentioned, I don't want to repeat exactly what he said, but it did happen. So the concept of black as a unifying concept <coughs> is very dominant, as it was with the concept of ethnic minorities unit or minorities ethnic unit. Remember that? We used to say ethnic minorities, then we changed it to minorities ethnic. And so the process by which we go through all of these things is very interesting in itself. So what happened is that when Ken Livingston engineered a coup to become the mayor of London, he brought with him his own agenda and he brought with him his team. There was a small group of us, he approached me and he approached others and said, look, come and join the GLC. I'm going to be in charge. I want you as officers to come and carry the Labour Party agenda. No, sorry, not the Labour Party agenda, the Ken Livingston agenda. <laughs> uh, and that is what we did. So he brought us into the Greater London Council. Lord Oosley, I was Lord Oosley's deputy, and we had a police unit, we had a, a women's unit, we had a, a, a race and et, um, ethnic minorities unit, we had an economic development unit, and so on. The idea behind it was to look at the governance of London and made the governance of London more responsive to the people of London. Part of the people of London were those people of black and minority ethnic origin, people who came from the Caribbean, from Africa, and from other parts of the Commonwealth. Yeah. Um, notice I'm not going to say anything about Windrush because I don't want anybody to conflate me with a, a boat. Okay? I am not a Windrush generation. And I don't like anybody repeating that. I, mean, I said that quite openly, and I can share something with you. The Prime Minister has established a committee uh, to advise her on what to do to commemorate and mark the Windrush uh, icon, the uh, Windrush issue. Um, fortunately, unfortunately, I'm a member of that committee, so the opportunity for everybody to influence what should, what should happen. Then, after that, there's about a half a million pounds every year for grants, for projects and so on. So keep your eyes open for that. Sorry, let me get that. I'm digressing. <laughs> so what happened within the GLC was that th there was this expect expectation that all of us, and most of us were the young people who came excited by the idea that something is going to happen because we had money. The GLC was <coughs> able to acquire money through a, a lo local government act section 137, which says that a percentage of the rates you were given could be used for cultural activities and things of that nature. So we had some serious, serious money, millions and millions of pounds. So we wanted to know what we should be able to do in terms of developing that. And as the Ethnic Minorities Unit, we came out with this concept of the anti-racist year. And that's where it began to, or everything started to be the gel. The concept of the anti-racist year was to celebrate the fact that we want to put racism on the agenda throughout the whole of local government, not just Greater London, ILEA and all the local authorities that made up uh, the ILEA and Greater London. So the discussions were happening among ourselves of what it is that we should do. 
and uh, what kind of activities should happen. And I think I want to put that in, in its perspective because I want you to begin to understand what those discussions will happen. It's like at your workplace, you start discussing among yourself. To take over from your mantle. That, that's the problem. Uh, we need a succession strategy for all the things we're doing. And, and I, that's one of the things I'm doing because I acknowledge that I'm a dinosaur and I'm holding on to power and I must make an opportunity for people to take over. We're doing it. I mean, at, at the moment, I'm the chairman of the Notting Hill Carnival. So, and I've been doing that for 40 years. Mm. So I need to be able to hand over that mantle to some of the younger people. So I said to, the, to, to them, the, the other carnival people, I've given you three years. And for those three years, I'm going to give up after the third year. Because I've been doing this over 40 years. It's time to give up. But in giving up those three years, I want to see two mentors, mm. two mentees, mm. who will take over from me. Year one, they will work shadow me. Year two, I will work shadow them. And year three, they will take over and I will have a light touch. I think that is what we need to have. And that is what I want to say to our young people. Not only your young people, some of you here who are young enough to be able to take control and take ownership. Because one of the problems within our community, we have people in power that hold on to power and don't allow others to come forward, come forward. And particularly our women, because we keep our women under wraps. We don't allow them to come through in that way. So for me, our young people is our future. And I want to build that capacity for them to take over, to have that understanding, so that we can stop the opportunities where we are really into that, the, 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 kind of the kind of community activities that are negative. And we need to work with each other to the extent that we have a, a commitment, all of us, to contribute to the future of our young people. And that could be in anything, a supplementary school, or walking down the street and see somebody misbehaving, do as we used to do before. Stop it, don't do that. Speak to them, speak to your mum. I mean, I used to do that when I teach at schools in, 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 in South London. I teach in mostly girls' school, and there was a, a, a problem, you know, because they would behave badly, so going into the toilets, doing their bits and smoking and doing all things, I would go into the toilet. Sir, you can't come in here. This is a girl's toilet. I said, no, no, no. I can come in any toilet. If you're misbehaving, I can come in any toilet. Get out of this toilet and come to my class. And they would do that. Because they know if they continue any, um, any, any continued resistance, it's the parents I go into next. And I will get the support of the parents to discipline those kids. We don't have that anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. I think I want to wrap it up, but before I do, I'll say there's a project we did about 10 years ago, we launched it in, in Harrow, called the Because Youth Project. And uh, a year later, we had a couple of uh, summits in the House of Commons. And uh, it was the Labour government, so there was uh, Vernon Coker was one of the Home Office Ministers. And he came and said, yes, I discipline my children, and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. After the conference, his, 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 his staff was telling us to delete the discipline. Mm -hmm. And we said, well, if he, he said, so if he writes and tells us to, to delete it, because people are afraid to use the word discipline. Mm -hmm. Discipline doesn't necessarily mean spanking. Mm -hmm. My wife tells me that in days gone by, and a lot of Africans and African Caribbean people have the same story. Mm -hmm. Your mom just had to look at you. Mm -hmm. It's a form of discipline. So it may not be just about that. I want to end and say, look, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Please don't let Sandra take her three or five books. She's made an effort. I've got a couple of DVDs and things in there. On the left are bits and pieces. Take a flyer. The lady's got a flyer. Take a flyer. That's absolutely free. So take a flyer for either 5th or, no, it's 3rd November in Hol uh, Holborn, or else uh, 26, which is a month today in Civic Center. Yeah, so take a flower. City Hall. City Hall. <laughs> Thank you very much for the prizes. <laughs> and it's great that people are so alert. But so, I just want to give one of my prizes. What, uh, these are some of our resources. Um, Nana always has a book, but I don't have copies of it. It's called African Voices, Quotations by People of African Descent. So I don't have that. But what I have is, a book or uh, a DVD that we did called, I can't even read that. You read it, please. Me. Have you got better I'm answer? No, <laughs> okay, okay. It's a bit of a mouthful, so I always have to read it.
there we go. It's called, look how far we've come, commentaries on British society and racism. So it's a question mark, right? So we've got Paul Stevenson, we've got, well, we don't have answers. Hey, no, we have you. We have you, and I'm sure, because I think he's in there. So um, you can have that. And then we did a role model project, because when we're doing the Because Youth Crime project, we did our questionnaires. And the top four was what we wanted to move forward. And we were talking about role models. So we ended up doing a male uh, focus role model project. Uh, we did not focus on the usual things like uh, sports and entertainment because there are role models in other areas that are underrepresented. So that's, that's what that was about. And then this was a book that I used for a conference to do with this DVD. They look how far we've come. So we've got a booklet on uh, racism. So those are the results I'm going to give to the three people who want, want something. So I really want to say, on that note, right, I really, really appreciate you guys for coming. If you signed in, you may be on our main list, but I'll just put all the names back in the main list to remind you, take a flower, and if you can participate at this too. Nana is doing next Monday, 5th November, at Harrow Men Cup. pan Africanism may seem but I tell these young girls, right, they're young, but they'll still understand because unlike me talking, she's got videos or, and or, well, she's got a lot of visuals and it's short but really, really tells you a lot about pan Africanism. And then I hope you can come because I would not be surprised if your youngsters, right, pick up teachers and say, no, I went and do you know those mm -hmm. things? They go to these programs, Akala, for example, because they're going to Black History <coughs> Month programs, he's used to pick up his teachers because like the teacher, this is a classic one, the teachers, divorce Egypt from Africa and because it's called Saturday school she was able to pick up and then instead of applauding and then they try and, and, and beat you down but it also builds confidence this is what so last thing right the Marcus God has had so many courses and I'm terrible at course that's why I, I, I put the book together but the sense is that if you know your history it empowers you to move for, forward. So that's mm -hmm. why we do these things. So I think that's a good note to end on. Mm -hmm. Have a look at those things. We did an article. Oh, yeah. Last, last, last thing. My issue is that we rush is part of our history, but God, be careful that we don't locate that history in just 1948. So I did an article saying that African history is wider, or something to that uh, extent. So next year, we're going to do one rush, and I'm glad answer is here. I think we can't just talk about Windrush and, and the, the 1948 or we came to build Britain. We've got a history going back. So we can choose the, the, the past and you can choose even the future or now. So we've got to be mindful that Windrush is not located in that 48, 1950 situation. So that's me done. Thank you very much. Yeah.